you know when you said it was the 4th of May? I, I, I did say it was the 4th of May. Yeah, and you're right to do so. Yeah. Um, but it, I, I, I glanced down as well, and sure enough, it is the 4th of May. It's my birthday tomorrow. Oh, and I didn't know until I saw it uh, written down and I thought, oh, that's close to my birthday tomorrow. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I totally You figured. didn't... Come on. Everyone, everyone has... Everyone like a little radar. Everyone feels their birthday coming up. I would say yeah. about six weeks out. Yeah. Not the day yeah. before. I've never the day before my birthday gone. It's my birthday tomorrow and it hasn't occurred to me at any point well, of the year after that. Well, it just happened to me. But... Teacher one. Have you ever forgotten your own birthday? Have you ever forgotten your own birthday? <laughs> How close have you got to forgetting before? Yeah. Has anybody actually got past it and gone, hey, oh, it's my birthday yesterday? But you know when you see your birthday... That would be great. When you see your birthday written down, you know, yeah. for some other reason, mm-hmm. it's quite... It resonates, doesn't it? It does resonate. You're like, well, that's, that's, that's my number. Yeah, that's your number, and somebody else has written it down, yeah. not knowing, not even you, thinking about your birthday. You can't have the sum of fate on that day. No, you look at the top of the paper and it says the 18th, yeah. or you don't think, oh, well, obviously think, that was mine, 18th of October. Well, there you go, you'd feel like you owned the papers or something. You'd feel like Rupert Murdoch yeah. for the day. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> you know, we'll start keeping the papers. Um, anyway, so happy birthday for tomorrow. Thanks very much. And thanks very much for launching Feature One. How close have you got to forgetting your birthday? <laughs> Tom has just looked at the paper, realised it's the May the 4th, his birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> which I, it's remarkable, I think. I don't think we'll beat that today. I'm See 13 if we'll beat hours, that. Though. I'm 13 hours away from You're 13 birthday. hours away before Tom realised it was his birthday. Yeah, that's, that's cutting it fine, isn't it? Yeah, that is cutting it fine. But can I tell you what happened yesterday? What? Whoa, is this, is this going to lead into another feature? It might do, Already actually, yeah, yeah. This is the most successful start to a show we've ever had. <laughs> We're 12 minutes in, and we've got a genuinely good feature on the go. And, uh, One that is worthy of local radio. Yeah, that's uh, without a shadow of that. What happened? What? I didn't know I was coming in today. What? Till uh, yesterday? No, 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 not, not, not <laughs> Yeah, well, yes, till what yesterday. What a week you're having. It's just constant surprises, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Um, and, uh, I, I... There was a... I mess up with emails or whatever, and I didn't know. And um, Bridget, the producer, yeah. phoned me yesterday ahead of this morning to ask if everything was okay. Now, my wife, uh, she phones, she uses her mobile phone to phone clients for her job, right? As a result, she blocks the number. Uh, right. So, oh, so yeah. I, you know what I mean? It comes up blocked yeah. when she phones. Yeah. And uh, because Bridget phoned me about one o'clock, perfect time for Lulu to call my wife, yeah. I thought the number was blocked. Uh, I thought number was blocked. I thought it was Lulu. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, because the BBC, they do block numbers as well yeah, when they yeah. ring you, yeah. Exactly. Now, so, as, I, as usual, when the wife phoned, oh, I, I, I dug into my big bag of funny voices. Oh, dear. <laughs> and so you, a, just to clarify, ladies and gentlemen, story about to you is Tom answered the phone, believing it to be his wife. Yeah, yeah. We block but it, it was, in fact, Bridget, the producer from BBC World. So what did you say? This could go I, one of many ways, this. Yeah, I, 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 I opted for, like I say, I've got on the scope of funny voices I grew yeah. up with. Funny the I, sexy ones, I imagine, too. Yeah, yeah, well, this time I opted for um, the guy who lives two doors down from us, who's <laughs> a uh, 75-year-old Muslim man. <laughs> and uh, whenever I see him, I answer the phone like this. I said, so I'm on the call. <laughs> and there was a horrific pause before Bridget went, Oh, it's Tom there. <laughs> it's Tom. <laughs> I, I, I nearly carried it on. I thought, oh, you know, <laughs> if I carry on saying, call back Tom, and Tom just yeah, yeah. in the bathroom. Um, I didn't, I just yeah. fessed up straight away. I went, oh, no, it was me. I thought it was my wife, so I pretended to be a 75 year old Muslim oh, man. Dear, dear. I apologise. Um, but have you ever done that? Have you ever, have you ever thought it was someone? Feature two. Phone? There you go, feature two. Feature two, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever answered the phone thinking it was one person only to find out that it was another? Horrified. It was all the door. Yeah. All the door. Already two features, already too much. It's hot, 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 Dale. The front page says Britain will sizzle in 79 degrees Fahrenheit. I've seen I've seen headlines that say it's hotter than Mallorca on Monday. Really? Yeah. They, they love it. I don't think they... You know what I mean? That could be for many years. Every year this gets pedaled out. You see a picture of a thermometer. The mercury topped. Yeah. People, there'd be a picture of same, two girls. Same photos on the beach. Two girls. Yeah, two yeah. attractive ladies on Bournemouth. Yeah. Right, and there's a picture of Bournemouth. Sizzle at 79 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what that is in C. I think it's C now, don't you? Have we all moved on to C? Well, I, uh, I used to think in F, but I think I think it's C now. I, I tend to think in gas, Yeah, <laughs> 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 200, 180 <laughs> Fahrenheit. I don't, don't really think it's C, don't we? I don't know, 79, I don't know. Uh, yeah, in the old years, to me, yeah. 20 years ago, that would have meant something to be 80 degrees, always 80 degrees. Why do you remember as a child? Is that about 24, is it? You know, just guessing. So, I, I must have been really young because this totally bad.
I thought <laughs> they, were, they, were, they, were, they were ahead by two years. They Can were, I just point out, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just joined the show, Tom is telling us a story <laughs> of how, at the age of 12, unfamiliar with, uh, with, uh, with time zones across the world. Why would you be at 12? Why would you be familiar? <laughs> oh, surely you wouldn't be so unfamiliar with them that somebody could tell you it's in the 90s if, in Canada and you if, thought it's 1988 here. It must, <laughs> they mean in Canada it's in the 1990s. Yeah, They're two you, years ahead. Yeah, but Put your watches yeah. forward, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You might want to start putting your watches forward now because, because it's going to take you roughly nine hours continuous winding of your watch <laughs> to, put, to, put it, to put it on two years ahead. But yeah. if you don't know... Your what brain, is with you in time? Brain makes extraordinary right. leaps to try and feature three. Logically, <laughs> if all, all I knew was it's the midnight there, a unit that meant nothing to me, uh, and I knew that there was a, a, a concept of time difference, yeah. and I knew that my world in Sheffield at that time was 1988. What would you have made? Of course, you'd have thought. Well, if it was in Wales, it was 1988, and I was off to Canada as a young 12-year-old boy, and. Uh, Somebody said to me, we're going to Canada, it's in the 90s there. <laughs> Would I have thought they meant it's the 1990s because it's that far away? Yeah. I, can't, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And the reason I say I don't know is because I'm laughing at you, but... But, and this is worse in a way, when I was 22... There we go, I should have known better by then. <laughs> <I> should, <laughs> somebody said to me, and I couldn't get my head around this for a minute, and, and when I came home, I told my mum and she couldn't get her head around it, and she was 70. <laughs> 16. So there we go. Uh, just for a second, just for a second, they got me. He said, "When you go to Australia, he said, look, look at all the horse races in the whatever it was, Caribbean or whatever it was, Fiji or whatever it was like that. And then have a look at all the results come in. And then when you're in Fiji the next day, <laughs> just the day before or whatever it is, he said, put all the bets on the horses that you know are going to win in the race like that. And I genuinely fell for it for a few minutes. I was like, hey, yeah, why would that not work? Yeah. If the date is the 22nd of Feb in Australia and it's the 21st in Fiji, why?" Can't yeah, and I genuinely fell for that. And then I went home and I told my mum it. And she genuinely fell for it for a few minutes. <laughs> like just that brain, your brain trying to make sense of that. Yeah, and, and therefore making a horrific conclusion. Well, I went, I went to New Zealand. Was, you don't yeah. think about the daylight until you come to I don't, until you come to think about the daylight. Yeah, you think about it, exactly. Yeah. And because it's... Uh, they could be out there now, think, people thinking, yeah, why wouldn't that work? Why, why people carry watch all streets in Australia, then go back over the daylight to a day before and put a bet on it? Carrying suitcases of cash. <laughs> <laughs> and a racing pouch yeah, going, yeah. oh, we're, we're on to something here. Yeah. Feature four, has that ever worked for you? <laughs> daylight gambling. Has anyone ever... <laughs> successfully crossed the date line and managed to put a bet on something okay. already happened the day before somewhere else. And cheat the rigid <laughs> and linear nature of time. They exactly. I can tell you they haven't. But when I went to New Zealand... You can't right? tell us they haven't. Anything could happen on Radio Wales, mate. Well, I know that. There is that. But... Hey, somebody might write in and say they have. And then that'd be fun, wouldn't it? We're on a German autobahn listening to your show live near Castle. Right? Why are they doing that? I've got no idea, mate. It's from Lynn Thubron and Jasper the dog. Thank you for reminding me. She says it's my husband Alan's birthday tomorrow. Oh, there we go. Actually, forgot. Rod, tell me, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not... See, I know people are going to forget other people's birthdays. That's not the question. It's how close have you got to your own birthday before you've got... Ah, hang on, it's my birthday tomorrow. I know, but a significant other, that's just as valid, I think. Uh, do you think? Well, yeah, you should have. Oh, that's your feature. Just as valid. <laughs> back in the game, Alan. <laughs> yeah. uh, morning, Rod and Tom. Your talk of birthdays has reminded me I'm 23 a month tomorrow. Yeah, but see, this is the thing. I think most people are aware of their birthday about a month out. Whereas Tom was 13 hours away when he remembered. And he only remembered. Oh, no, if you'd have remembered, if I hadn't, if I hadn't said the date then, when would you have remembered? I think I would have seen the date before that. I've not seen the date today, you know. But yesterday, you must have seen the date yesterday and gone, it's my birthday in two days' time. It kind of comes completely out of the blue that it's your birthday I've tomorrow. obviously not looked at... I, you know what, if I see May, I'm aware that it's... It's, it's your birthday, birthday month. month. Yeah, it's your birthday month. April doesn't, 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 doesn't flag anything up. So I've obviously just not looked at... <laughs> no alarm bells, bells in April. April. No, no, no alarm bells in April. <laughs> <laughs> Features today. we got one on the go. No, we got two on the go. Uh, how close have you got before you remembered it was your birthday? What's your sort of personal best then in remember in well personal best in forgetting your own birthday up to what point? Is yeah, it? The, <coughs> the, 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 the minimum number of hours before. It the was. minimum number of hours. At what point has anyone ever got to within an hour or two of their birthday and gone? Ah, I've I've got just remembered uh, it's my birthday. I've got some. I've got. I'm collecting personal bests. Personal bests. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll put this out there. See if anyone can beat this. Um, I've. Oh, I'll let, hang on. I've got the pen. Feature two, by the way, I'll put this in feature three, because feature two is, have you ever answered the phone or the door expecting someone, and then it was someone else, and you've done something goofy? Tom answered the phone to what he thought was his wife in a goofy manner, and it turned out to be the producer of this show. Correct, so I adopted the voice of a 75-year-old Muslim gentleman. Could have been worse. <laughs> Could 
have been worse, John. It could have been a lot, worse. Been a lot worse. So at least you just said hello or whatever. You know, yeah. you didn't. Uh, you know, it could have been. You could have. Been, you could have answered in a saucy manner. Could have done, yeah. That would have not been appropriate. You wouldn't have been. I would have been tattooed for a producer of a BBC show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got personal best though. Right? Uh, I don't think I'm gonna pick this. I uh, I put it down. Personal best. Personal best. I've spoken to my wife for 13 minutes. Yeah. In BMQ. Yeah. Four minutes. She wasn't actually stood next to me. That is a that is a that is a that is a personal yeah. best. That such how engrossed was I in dimensions in in the different knobs you could have put on it or hinge types. What were you talking about? Shell configuration. Where were you standing? Yeah. And the shop and the shops are a bit up. Yeah, but you know, in a, a DIY place and I was measuring up for some shelves. Yeah. With doors on. Yeah. And I was just talking, I looked and she wasn't even fucking talking for How do you know it was thirteen minutes? Because I've checked like, there was a massive clock on the wall. Well, you checked it when you started talking. Oh, yeah, you thought, I'm, I'm going to give the wife a good old talking to her. 13 yeah? minutes. I mean, it was bang on the hour when I when I went over to these things, and I was yeah. I, I was bent down measuring, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you got, talk got non-stop about the shelves and about the sort of measurements. And, yeah. Sort of thinking out loud, but to thinking her. out loud to her. Yeah, yeah. yeah 13 she, she minutes. Was, she was exactly. She was a sounding board that I thought was there. And, it was, and when you and then you looked around and she wasn't there. She wasn't there. And then you looked at the clock again to check how long. Yeah, and it was it was just past twelve. Minutes. How do you know she hadn't come and gone a few times? She might have come and gone. Do you not ask her? I uh, asked her to check if that I, is a personal best. I, well, can't. It's very difficult to verify this. Well, why don't you ask her when you get home? Okay. Just say, look, you know that thirty minute thing. Cause you must have talked about this since. Yeah. Yeah. Just say, did you come and go or not? Can't you just need to be clear about it? So well, I mean, she'd have, no, I don't think she did because if she had, she'd have thought, oh, she's talking to me. Yeah, but then she may have just walked away, gone, oh, hang on, we've got distracted over there, look. Oh, look, there's a lampshade. Yeah. It's very easy, distracted in DIY it. shops. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It did. Yeah, that's why you mentioned it. Why did you get into a groove, talking, uh, you know, brackets? I've never done wall that. Wall plugs, rather. Wall, wall plugs take that to a lot of discussion. <laughs> maybe, maybe we're real, like, maybe we're starting to learn why your wife wasn't there when you turned around. <laughs> <laughs> she probably was there for the first minute or two, and then she just thought I can't show now. But the second longer of this tedious roll plug, conversation monologue about roll plugs and shelving units. Maybe she's maybe she's just wandered off board. You know what happens to me last night? Nightmare. Oh god, it's feature four. Well, well <clears throat> I mean, you can. I mean, well, I'll tell you what happened. Well, I, was, I was trying to get a night bus home. Right? I was in London town. I was yeah. Trying to get a night. It was about two o'clock in the morning. I was going to say, I hope it was nice and early, what were you knowing you have the show today? Yeah, yeah, exactly, it was nice and early, about half two. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, the, the, the night bus, well, I could catch a night bus from town, it goes right past my flat, you see. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's wonderful, it takes about 25 minutes. And I got the, and I tried to You must be the first person in the world to describe the night bus as wonderful. It is, it's a, <laughs> I don't, it's I don't, I don't think it's, it's the bad night. press, but it's absolutely fine. It does get by, it is absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an, enri- yeah. an enriching cultural experience. Yeah. I got the old Oyster car now, you know, the prepaid uh, yeah, ticket yeah. that we use here, and uh, dabbed it on the machine out of funds. Oh. Uh, and I said to the driver, oh, and he said, oh, it's out of funds. And I went, oh, flipping out. I said, can I pay you? And he went, yeah, yeah, it's £2.40. Fine. I said, rummage into pockets. I thought I had some change, couldn't find any. Um, and I'd, I happened to be carrying quite a wad. I'd been paid for gigs, you see, so I happened to be carrying quite a wad of cash in £20 notes. So I said, look, I've, I've only so got been doing stand up gig. I've been doing stand up gig, yeah. Uh, I said, I've only got a 20 pound note. And he went, I can't take that. <coughs> I can't take that. You'd have to get the change. And I said, Do you know what? It's 30 quid in a cab. This is as good as a cab. You can honestly just keep the change. I wasn't, I wasn't being flashed. I wasn't being flashed. And I that is quite flashed. Paying the night bus driver 20 quid. I was quid. desperately trying to make it not that. I was just going, look, if you. Well, what about the same two just give us a tenner back, maybe? Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. That, like, I didn't think of that. I just went, I mean, you haven't got the change now, have you? You'll have it in a bit. So, well, maybe give me that, or just... And he wouldn't let me do it. He, wouldn't. he said, I can't accept that. He said, he said if an inspector gets on... And, uh, and the other thing is, you could be an inspector because well, there's, 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 there's those signs everywhere. There's signs everywhere that says it's easy to spot a ticket inspector. They look just like <laughs> exactly, you. Yeah. That's what the, that's what the adverts say. <laughs> I don't think they look like you, though. To be honest, Tom. If anybody looked like you and they became a ticket inspector, I'd be very disappointed. With their lack of imagination. There'd be so much more opportunities. Though. It freaked me out. The last thing I think is uh, this guy's clearly checking tickets. You imagine if I got a bloke on that looked exactly like you. Would you think it was a ticket inspector then? Uh, no, I'd go. Uh, <laughs> what even this 
despite the advertising, I've I've told that, you I've explicitly gone. they look exactly like you. That's a, that's a brilliant shirt you've got. <laughs> Can I have it? I'll put looks like it fit me, then. What would you do if you met your... Doppelganger. Yeah, I've often wondered that. What would you do if you met your doppelganger? I used to think mine was was uh, Trev off Trev and Simon. We were extremely similar. Were you? There's stages in our life where we have been phenomenal. Weren't you on the, the cover of the phone book that we bought for you? The back of the phone book. Yeah. There's a kind of plumber character or yeah. somebody with a roller like a pig.